Hi. When we left off uh, in the particle effects video, we had created this thing right here using nothing more than a canvas and some vanilla JavaScript. Um, what I wanted to do today was to add to that some noise effects and some color as well. Um, to do that is very, very straightforward. We're going to include this little script here, this function to get curl, which is for curl noise. The curl noise is described in more detail in this great post by Keith Peters on his website, bit101.com. Uh, recommended reading. In fact, in general, uh, I recommend Keith Peters' blog uh, for clear descriptions of computer graphics ideas. Uh, check it out. Okay, back to our particles. They're beautifully emanating out of the center of the screen. I'm going to import that get curl from uh, from the project. This code's up on GitHub. The library's already in there. And I'm going to uncomment this line here where I'm passing in the X and Y position of, uh, of the particle. Uh, and multiplied by this scale here. You'll see what that it does in a second. And then I'm going to add that to um, the particle's velocity. Okay. Actually, the particle's position. Sorry. I could add it to the velocity, but I'm going to add it to the position. And it looks a little something like this. Okay. Isn't that nice? You can see a little bit better what's going on if I were to comment out the velocity for each particle. Now, they're only influenced by that curl. And you can kind of see what that looks like. It looks like a noodle kind of floating around. All the particles have zero velocity. The only thing that's moving them is this curl, this value for curl. Um, if I increase the noise force to 10, now it kind of blows them around a little bit more. And because um, I'm only partially erasing the particles, you can see their trails and it leaves this really cool effect. Kind of looks like smoke or something like that. Um, let's add the velocity back in. And reduce that noise force. All right. So you can play around with these values, like the noise scale. Uh, this noise scale is inversely uh, proportional to the effect it'll have on the screen. If I make it larger, like 0 0.1, it causes the particles to vibrate much more frequently. Uh, 10 times slower, 0. 0 0.1, and you could see they're kind of wiggling and, and with bigger waves. And I, I like it here. So there's these nice big arcs. Okay, that's what the noise scale is for. And I already kind of showed you noise force. If I reduce noise force to zero, it has zero effect on the particles. Uh, increase it to 100 and it completely obliterates them. <laughs> Leave it at one for now. All right, the next thing I want to do is to affect the color of the particles. Um, I'm already kind of setting this, the color down here, but we're not seeing it because these, the, they're drawn at maximum lightness and that just kind of blows away all the color. If I make that color, uh, sorry, the lightness fade out over time, then that color is revealed. In this case, a hue of zero out of 360 degrees, zero is red. Uh, if I change that to 180 degrees, what is that, cyan? And I guess 90 degrees is like yellow or green or something. Cool, so you, you get the idea, I hope. Um, what I wanna do is to see that change over time though. One way to do that would be to just use this uh, T value. 
as you recall from the previous video, each particle in the animate loop, um, each particle is being updated with this time value, and that time value, in this case, I'm using to uh, determine what hue it gets. But we can also use the curl noise to influence that. Let's say curl dot x, whoops, times 90. And you see the color kind of shifting over time, but not moving through the, the spectrum in a linear way, kind of as the way it was a moment ago. But the, because it's a curl noise, it's kind of moving around in a less predictable way. Uh, it's not just cycling through the rainbow of colors, but kind of jumping around in there. Um, yeah. You could play around with increasing this value, this multiplier here to 360, and then you'll get a lot more colors. Um, heck, make it 720, and it'll be like confetti. Colors constantly shifting and changing. Um, I kind of like it around 90. Okay. You could apply that noise to the lightness value or the alpha value. Um, I suppose you could apply it to the velocity as well. Play around with both of those things. That's pretty much it. We simply added noise to the movement of these particles as well as added some color, some interesting color to them as well. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what else you'd like to see. And as always, thanks, and I'll see you next time.